Balance in single player games is overrated. A lot of fuss is made around comparing a player's available options, determining the best ones, and then dunking on the others. Sure, there are design reasons to make every option appealing, you don't want to spend development resources on something that nobody wants to play, but balancing them across the same scale is the most boring way to go about doing that. Are there times when balance is important? Sure. Fire Emblem as a series often has far more playable units than deployment slots, and you want to make sure that whatever army composition a player chooses or is left with, that they are not locked out of finishing the game. And with extra content like support conversations locked behind using every unit in the game in various combinations, you'll probably want most units to be at least potentially useful on most maps. You'll also want to make sure that one tactic doesn't completely blow through the game in a way that makes it boring or unfun. There may be a time and place for effective god modes, cheat codes, easy modes, or other options that enable most players to win without having to try, but when one player choice is far and away better than any other option, then it robs the fun from both the overpowered option, as the player never engages with the game's systems, and from the underpowered choices, as comparison effect may make many players bemoan their comparative lack of power. Instead of balancing in a strict linear fashion, one option to increase engagement with the wide variety of content available in your game is to attempt to provide incomparables, or items that require some abstraction to compare and can provide interesting or unique gameplay. For instance, there are some weapons in Souls games that are, put simply, not as good as most things you could be doing, but they do provide unique movesets or may just look cool, so you might want to use them anyway. The eighth different type of straight sword in your inventory might not be worth using on a new run, but that big ol' scythe? That one might be fun to try. Fire Emblem used to have this in spades, with units being locked to their own classes. If you wanted to use multiple cavalry or multiple flying units, you would probably have to use some numerically worse units than if you had a more diverse team. Sometimes though, if you wanted more variety on your team, it would inherently mean picking worse units than if you narrowed your focus onto those few better classes. With the advent of reclassing units, however, Fire Emblem has been forced to take extra steps to try and make their units feel unique, with mixed results. Three Houses did this by building an entire progression system of skills and combat arts that was unique to every unit in the game, although a player wouldn't know that until they were deep into experimenting with builds or looking it up online. Engage, by comparison, struggled to make its units stand out, as despite every royal having a unique base and promoted class, the other units all shared the same basic class pool with little but their stats, personal skills, and non-gameplay factors like their appearance and personality to differentiate themselves from each other. I went back through some of my old videos recently, and a game that I felt did this surprisingly well was Vistaria Saga. In a Fire Emblem style game, there is a lot you can do to make units feel unique, and while Vistaria Saga is fairly focused around doing more simple things like multiple attacks or adjusting stats most of the time, it does manage to have some very unique units that feel worth using, particularly for the mid-late game joiners who have to compete more directly for deployment slots. Whether it's Lianca getting guaranteed first strike and four times defense piercing attacks with high crit rate on any phase, a court being the only user of light and dark magic, and those magic types themselves having unique and strong spell effects, or Hilda's Justicia Axe being just insane, these units present to the player arguments for why they should be used that go beyond their raw stats, even in a game where stats are often the biggest determining factor of a unit's usefulness. I started thinking on this topic because of old school RuneScape's Leagues 5 Blazing Echoes and how everyone in pre-release season is clowning on Kandarin. To briefly sum up the game mode for those not in the know, Leagues is a temporary game mode of old school RuneScape wherein a player's character is locked to specific areas of the map that they choose and completing tasks to unlock relics which provide drastic game warping abilities. The map areas and relics are chosen by the player and are permanent, with no way to change those choices outside of starting a brand new character. The game has 9 different map regions to pick from, and players can unlock up to 3 regions on each character in addition to a shared starting zone. Kandarin is one of those regions, and historically has been among the most chosen region for its breadth of early and mid-game content, as well as the large number of intermediary steps for other regions best in slot items and abilities. However, 
It is a fairly old region, with little in the way of late game content, and with this particular league's features and changes, a lot of what it offered to previous leagues has been nullified, with very little being added in return. As such, the previously most picked region has been degraded to effectively the laughingstock and default worst choice for many players, as it just offers very little of interest to more endgame focused players. The failure of the Kandarin region, in my opinion, is a combination of both failed balance as well as a lack of meaningful incomparables. Pretty much all of Kandarin's basic offerings have become useless. The Grimoire Relic can be taken to get piety, Fremenic's Echo Ring and Necklace are better than most Zenite jewelry and the Occult Necklace, intermediate items like the Trident of the Seas can be fully skipped with bosses like Zolra dropping the complete Trident of the Swamp instead of just an upgrade piece, and without any endgame bosses or raids, the only thing Kandarin has going for it is a swath of content that is some of the oldest in the game, we're talking RuneScape classic days for a lot of it, and an echo item in the Devil's Element that, while somewhat unique, is extremely limited in what it can actually do. Ultimately, Leagues is a temporary game mode, and with all player accounts in it being Iron Men that can't trade or interact with other players, there's little in the way of direct competition. And, in ways when the region does compete with others, like League Points, it still offers basically the same as other regions, just split between other task categories. So, I feel it fits into this discussion of single player game balance. Could balancing the region make it more appealing? Maybe, but you would need to define how it gets balanced without breaking other regions. Since Leagues is built off of the base OSRS map, there's little you can do to actively change the region to improve its late game potential offerings. Some people have suggested merging Kandarin with Turanwin, its neighbor and smallest region in the game, though that comes with its own issues. If both regions already have comparable point totals to other regions, how many tasks would need to be cut from both to bring them down to par with the other regions? Would travel between the two require all the quests that the normal game requires? What of all the region-specific benefits Tyrannomon has received, like its own Echo Boss? Would combining these two regions, underdesired as they may be, not just create one massive region that many people may feel is too big to not just pick by default? I am not a designer at Jagex, and even if I was, it would be far too late to change things for this upcoming league. But, if I wanted player opinions and pick rates of regions to be more balanced, then what I would consider adding to Kandarin would be more incomparables. More types of content and rewards that other regions don't have. They tried what they could, with the Devil's Element being a very unique sort of item that surely captures some players' interests, but I feel like they could afford to go a lot farther, especially with how pushed other regions are in terms of raw stats or numbers. Thank you for watching the video, and bearing with me as I referenced a non-Fire Emblem game for a more significant portion of the video's runtime. I realize that my audience is mostly focused around Fire Emblem, but I do play other games and want to talk about them from time to time as topics allow. But let me know what games you feel have very well designed incomparables in the comments below. A very special thank you goes out to my YouTube channel members who help support me in making these videos, particularly Royal Lagoose Guard member The Forgotten L, and Lagoose Guard members C2 Peekily, Enigmatic Mr. L, Mad Moke, Bro Duderman, Kumi, Miss Mesmerism, Lakag, Rella6, Salmelon, and Inside Chaos. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and until next time, this is Mithril Zenith signing out.